today. Today we're gonna get started on the blazer and all of the rust repair and we're getting ready for paint after that. So I am gonna paint it black. I've got the interior pretty much stripped out. We're gonna do the dash. All the interior is gonna get painted. It's gonna get sound deadening matte and then I'm gonna put the existing sound deadening back in because it's still for the most part intact. And then I'm putting a, an all new interior in it as well. Not new, but new to me out of a, a newer truck that's more complete. It has more of the side panels in the back and stuff where I can hide sound deadening to hopefully make it a little bit quieter on the road. That's the idea here. But the subject of today's video and, and most of the, well, probably this entire series will be this stuff. So we got a lot of, uh, uh, there's a lot of rust in here, a lot of old Bondo work. I think this truck had like a semi restoration done roughly 20 years ago. And they put new fenders in the front, new inner fenders, new hood because of some hail damage. But it looks like they just didn't do anything that had to do with welding. So the rockers are rotted out, the fender or the rear quarters are rotted out. A little bit of this tail, tailgate light bucket is rotted out. All this stuff in the back is rotted out. So I've got all new panels offline. I can show you guys where I got them from if you want. I can link the website. I'll see if they work out. They seem like they're the right shape and size, but I, I doubt they'll be perfect. They'll probably be a little bit of welding and bending to go around. But the rot isn't too bad. These fenders are pretty much fine up here. So I'm not gonna be cutting out any of this. I do have the entire side panel that starts right about, I think up here maybe, somewhere on there and runs. But we're just gonna leave these center arches for the most part where they are. And any pieces that um, are not rotted out, I'm gonna leave it there so that I've got metal to reference when I cut and make my template. So for example, this piece that's rotted out here, I will try to probably cut it right here. So when I put in my template, I can just follow this line down this is completely rotted to the point where it's gone. So I can't take a measurement and say from here, it's this many inches down and that's where it needs to be. I do have some decent metal back here. So I can just make sure that this point lines up at the corner while it lines up with this. And then that's relatively in the ballpark of where I need to be. So we don't really have any, there is a little bit of tail pan rust in the tailgate, but I'm not gonna do that right now. If I ever need to do it, it'll be interior anyway. So I won't need to repaint the truck. It's still sturdy and structurally fine right now, so I'm not gonna mess with it too much. But I'm gonna start out probably with maybe grinding this stuff off. I'll probably actually remove the bumper first. That's the first thing that I think needs to go to get out of my way, so let's get started. We are moving forward, got the tail light out, bumper took like four years, as to be expected. Nah, that was cool. So, this is the area, this is the reason I bought, you know, unfortunately, these guys are probably so far from what I've seen, the worst of all of the replacement panels, these little tail light bezels or housings, they just don't line up very well at all, but fortunately, I don't need to use much of them. I only had to buy it because of right here, they had this rust bubble that was going. It actually doesn't go that far into the taillight bezel, but I'm probably gonna cut out somewhere around here, something like that. And then there's a tiny corner of rust over here that I'll just cut out. And on the other side, this area right here is rusted on the passenger side. So I had to buy two of them, both sides, but otherwise that spot's fine. And this metal's all for the most part good. So we're just gonna cut this stuff out and start welding in. But I just wanna double check some of these areas, make sure there's not a ton of Bondo over everything. So that's what we're doing right now. So let's start uh, measuring out our areas and then we'll start cutting this. I'm not really a bodywork guy. 
This is not my first time doing it, but it's my first time doing this much extensive rust repair in all these weird corners and pockets. So I will let you guys know how I end up doing it, whether I which piece I cut first and, and where to go from there. So I think I'm gonna cut out my body first. So that way I don't get a surprise if I cut out this panel and then I go to cut this one out and it's actually rusted all the way over here as well. So I'm gonna cut out all the rust from the body first, making sure I still leave myself some points of reference. And then I will mark a template on this guy and we'll cut that one out. And we'll use the flange tool to bend this thing in and we'll set our patch panel in there. So here's the reason that I'm saying cut your body before the panel. It's back here. I just found a huge rust spot. It was just that, like two very small bubbles of paint. I almost couldn't really tell. I just felt them with my hand. So I took the grinding disc to it and it just started going through a lot of Bondo and it looks like somebody backed into a pole or someone hit the corner of the truck and basically caved it in and they just filled it with Bondo, smoothed it out and painted over it. That's fine, but I'm in here and I've got the, the corner so I wanna replace it and find all the rust while I can. And uh, this piece looks like it's all solid metal. We're about right there on, and then we have our little solid metal line over there. There is a bit of a rust hole down in this corner, and then it looks like it's, you can't see, but it's solid metal right there. So that's probably what I'll end up cutting out. And that'll do it for this tail light area. We're not gonna do the, uh, <sighs> the wheel arch tonight at least. So I'll probably start cutting that stuff out. Just keep poking around. Take your time. So I cut this off the truck. And um, it's a little bit different than the template guy or than the uh, new panels that I got here. My truck actually, I don't know if someone did this or what, but probably can't tell, but somebody or the factory, after this little corner, it just starts to cut back up at an angle, running this way on the truck. Whereas this one comes straight back here and it's got a bend in it. So I may have to chop this to make the line flush with that, but that shouldn't be too big of a deal. So then I stuck this up here and it pretty much matched all the curves correctly. Now all I gotta do is I'm gonna cut this out. I drew, up, drew around it with some Sharpie, silver Sharpie, and I'm going to cut, leaving maybe a half of an inch or an inch border around what I drew, so that way it would overlap on top of this, and then I'm gonna um, use a flange tool and punch this and bend it in maybe a fraction of an inch so that I can just lay it on top and do like a flange weld instead of a butt weld. I don't really wanna do butt welds here, I'm just gonna do flange welds. So that's the idea there. Let's cut this guy out. So here's my piece that I just cut out and they're pretty thin. I think they're a little bit thinner than what was their stock, but it's okay. So let's idea so the other thing that we're gonna do uh, I'm about to flange that area but I want to get some weld through primer on it as well so I need to grind off actually no the front side of this is pretty I might grind it a little bit I kind of smoothed it out already I might grind it for a second but we need to get weld through primer on 
this is the brand that I'm using. You want to get weld through primer on it, especially if you're doing flange welds. Whenever you're welding body panels or something like this where you're never going to be able to get to the back side again, so once I'm done, I will never be able to get to, well, not on this one, but since it's a flange weld, this is going to be bent in, and then my panel is going to lay over top of it, and it's going to be really hard to get to this clean metal once I weld it in. And especially when you're doing stuff where you can't get to the backside, like right up here, when I cut out this, there's a body panel, not a body panel, but like interior metal that I can't really get through to paint behind it. So I'm gonna make sure I shoot all of this stuff with the coat of weld through primer. So that's what we're gonna do right now. And I'm gonna take this over to the cardboard area to do that. So here's the idea. See that little ridge? I'm using a, um, uh, it's some sort of cheap flanging tool off Amazon. You know, I wouldn't recommend it to be honest. Bugs me, it didn't come with the pieces to use it. I couldn't hook it up to my compressor because I got a fourth inch couplers and this needed a three eighths to one fourth adapter so I had to run to Home Depot right now. But the idea is I've bent in the sheet metal so when I lay my piece, that has disappeared. Uh, huh. So when I lay this piece on here, let me switch hands. When I lay the piece on here, it just sits right in that, in that little groove. And then I can flange weld it instead of having to butt weld, burn holes through it. I can just flange weld it, drill holes, do stuff like that. And then, um, and then just fill the little bits in with Bondo. So that's that. All right, one more thing here. If you were never taught how to weld or you weren't brought up doing it, do yourself a favor, open up the chart, figure out what kind of material, the thickness of your wire, or if you're using gas. Just read the chart, figure out what you're doing, and do a couple practice test runs here before you actually move on to your, your physical material on the truck. Save yourself the time, hassle. Do a couple practice runs. But by all means, if you know if you were conceived inside of a welder, and um, you were born with a miller in your hand, well then, you're probably not watching this video. All right, big picture. Let's zoom in as usual, laying down some pretty terrible welds, boogery, nice and spot looking, but it's holding on there. So. What I'm doing here, just as a heads up, this stuff is 20 gauge. The panels that I bought, they are 20 gauge steel. I'm using a Hobart handler, running off 110, and I don't have gas. This is just flux core. It's uh, 0 0.030 flux core wire. The chart says you can't, you can't weld 20 gauge with um, 0.030. You need gas to do that thin, which I agree. It's not great. We're burning through some holes in some areas, but with the flange weld, we're gonna be able to grind this down and make up for it with some Bondo to fill in the gap is the idea here. So I don't think it's gonna be too big of an issue. I think it is going to stick once I grind it down and put some on. It's, I mean, it's stuck right now. We're getting decent welds. It's going through to the back side of this and burning all the way through my existing panel but it gets very hot very quickly. So in case anyone's wondering, or if anybody's ever gonna try this, I'm running about 30 on the uh, wire speed and one for the, I think voltage is what that is, on the Hobart Handler 140. That's what I'm running to lay these downs and you can't sit in one spot for very long. I'm holding it for maybe a second, second and a half tops per spot weld, and then I'll move to a different spot. And then I'll come back in a different spot and then there and there. And I'm jumping around all back and forth so that this panel doesn't get too hot and eat a hole through it. So that's all I'm doing right here. Um, it's working about as well as I thought it would, to be honest. I knew I should have gas for this. I don't care to go get gas. So this is what I'm doing. And that's about as well as it's working.